a brain tingle right at the bottom, which feels quite nice. However, it smells really Shelly! bad, so we've got to get this nail out now. Shelly! You do that by giving it just a little bit of a pose, a little bit of a pull, and finally a little wiggle, and out it comes. Because not only am I going to be performing the human blockhead for you, but I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to show you the secret so you two can go home, make terrible life decisions, and hammer nails into your face. And it starts like hammering a nail into absolutely anything. If you're going to hammer a nail into absolutely anything, the first thing you need to do is drill a hole. You guys are being real quiet for somebody that's about to drill his face. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Captain Darren Von Awesome. Yeah! I am a human blockhead. Well, let's give it up for our next performer. He is the one, the only, the great Gasly. Before the cell phone, people were very bored, and they came up with all kinds of weird ways to entertain themselves. Their favorite was a good old-fashioned public execution. Now, they went wild for these things back in the day. Would you like to see one here at the fair? A bloodthirsty crowd. We like that. To make this guillotine work, you've got to have three things. Okay, the first thing you'll need is a victim. Okay, but don't worry, we're not taking audience volunteers. You're safe. We've got a victim backstage. Put your hands together for Miss Spooky. Yeah! Woo! Miss Spooky will be our victim. The second thing you need is an executioner. That's me. And the third and most important part of any public execution, you've got to have an angry mob. And that's where you guys come in. You're going to be the angry mob. You even have a line. When I count to three, we're all going to raise our fists in the air and yell, Off with her head! Okay, let's try it. One, two, three. Off with her head! Perfect. Now I'm going to turn the crank, raise the blade, and remember, on three, it's off with her head. Don't forget your lines. One, two, three. Off with her head! It worked! Hey, Jizzy Diamond! Can you, uh, can you clean that body up for me back there? Thank you, sir. In the meantime, you guys, you want to see what's in this box? Yeah! yeah. What's in the box? It's the severed head of Miss Spooky. Oh. Now, Spooky, you look great. How do you feel? I don't feel too well. You did just cut your head off. Yeah, but your hair looks fine. Dizzy Todd, what'd you do with her body? I put it in the stage. And the thing, you guys want to see her headless body, too? Yeah! I thought you would. You're not going to be able to see it from way back there, but if you come on down over here, we have her. Through a miracle of modern medical science, she lives. She breathes. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes upon the headless body of Miss Spooky. Now, Spooky, wait to the crowd so you can see the mind-body connection is still strong. I know it's weird, it's freaky. No offense, Spooky, it's a little gross. So we are going to have to cover her back up so the doctors can check her vital signs. But Miss Spooky, wait, goodbye to everybody. And everybody give her a big round of applause. All right. Now we showed you her body, right? We showed you her head. Now we got to put them back together again. we got to fix it. The problem is, Spooky, you know I'm no doctor, right? I'm just a weird guy who works at this show. And maybe with a little duct tape and some super glue. Maybe, uh, maybe one of you guys can figure out what I'm going to It's just a trick, of course. I'll take those two things back to you. And for anybody who's scared, this Spooky is still alive and in one piece, as you can see. So you have to worry. That is the guillotine. I hope you enjoyed it. We've got a bunch more things for you. The next one's going to take place right over here, center stage. Please put your hands together for Dizzy Diamond.
And I'm here to swallow a sword for everybody. Would you like to see that? Good. That's why I brought this. This is a 25 inch long cavalry sword. And this sword will reach from the tip of my tongue. It will go down my throat, over my lungs, past my heart, and it will hit the bottom of my stomach here. Now when it hits the bottom, I'll let go, and you guys will burst into a thunderous round of applause because it's going to be awesome. Are you ready? So then here we go, down the hatch, without a scratch. still a magic trick. They don't believe that it's real. But sword swallowing is real. And it's very dangerous. And it kind of hurts. And for those reasons, I'm going to need some help. Okay? And, and your hand went up first, so you can be my helper. Come on up here. All right. Now you want to stand right there on the trap door. And what's your name? Everybody, this is Alex. Everybody say hi, Alex. Hi. Alex, these are your fans. Give them a big Hollywood wave. Perfect. Now, Alex, I'm going to do all the dangerous parts. You don't have to be nervous, okay? But I'm going to swallow this sword next. And you get to make sure that it's real. You can check it out. Make sure there's no buttons or switches. It's made out of metal. Tell everybody, is that a real sword? It is a real sword. Now, I'm going to swallow this sword. You stay right there. And it'll take the same path as the last one. We'll go from here all the way to here. But this time when it hits the bottom and I let go, I'm going to bend in half, I'm going to open my mouth, and I want you to look inside, and that way you can see that it really goes in there. It's not a trick. And Alex, if you look really close, you might even see what I have for lunch. Okay, now, since you're my assistant, you'll reach up and grab the sword and pull it out for me, okay? And when you grab it, it's real important. Make sure that you don't wiggle it or push it in or anything weird. Just pull it out nice and easy, okay? Otherwise, I'll die. No pressure. <laughs> Alex, have you ever pulled a sword out of a human body before? Good, because if you said yes, I'd be really nervous. Okay, so here we go. Down the hatch without a scratch.
welcome back out, Captain Darren Vaughn. Awesome! Ladies and gentlemen, I have a secret to tell you. I have a confession to make. Our show this afternoon has had an ulterior motive. Our first job and priority has always been to entertain and delight you, our adoring audience. However, we have had a second priority in this show, and that priority has been to kill Miss Spooky. Don't worry about it. Put your fingers in here. You don't need to hear this part. We have cut off her head and reattached it. She didn't even seem to mind. We threw her at the Ladder of Swords, and she gracefully climbed it like it was no big deal. Which leaves us with only one option. That option is, of course, to put her into the deadly electric chair, where we will run not one volt less than one million volts of electricity through her body. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Spooky to ride the lightning. Give me a big round of applause for Miss Spooky! Come on out, Spooky. Come on out, have a seat. Have a seat. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Have a seat. Relax, it's fine. No one would ever do anything to hurt you, Spooky. This is my favorite part of the show, ladies and gentlemen. It's my favorite part of the show because it's the part of the show where I get to flip the switch. Really? Sometimes, sometimes the chair acts up. I need to, I need to test the chair and make sure everything's working properly. You should have done this before the show, probably. Luckily, I have just the thing. Right here in this basket behind me, I have the electric chair testomatic light bulb. I'm going to hand this light bulb out to Spooky, and if everything is working as it should be, and that energy is coursing through Spooky's body, this light bulb will light up at her lightest touch. You see what I did there? Light, lightest, light, yeah, it's not a very good show. All right, everything seems to be working there, and as a matter of fact, this has given me a pretty good idea. Spooky, you seem pretty tense today. You seem pretty worked up, very anxious. I think you need to, uh, I think you need to lighten up. She can get a side job as a desk lamp, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it's going to get a little chilly today. And we've got a lot more shows to do. So I want to make sure that we can warm, warm the tent up. And we're going to use Miss Spooky's electrical conductivity to do that. Let's hear it for the indestructible Miss Spooky! What, you guys think I was gonna eat that fire? Are you nuts? That happens over there. If I can direct your attention to your right to the small stage in the corner, it's about to get a whole lot warmer with the great Gasleone!
all tricks of my lovely assistant, and that is accurate. She is both lovely and my assistant. But it would be just as accurate. Go off my way. You guys were married. And as any married couple can tell you, you gotta change things up to keep it interesting. You can't keep doing the same things over and over again. For example, when we first got together and I first started throwing knives at Miss Trixie, she would stand there. I would stand here. We looked at each other lovingly. And I'd throw the knives. It looked a little bit like this. change things up, and this is what we did. She would still stand there, I would still stand here, only this time, I would turn her face this way and bend over. Now this does two things, other than making me look slightly silly. First, it makes it extremely difficult to throw knives that way. And second, it gives Trixie to reveal the best seat in the house. <laughs> Talk about my butt. Let's go to photos after the show. Ready, love? Here we go, eyes on the prize. I wanted to pay homage to a movie coming out soon, a movie that I am super excited about. You see, it's a love story. It's about a couple of like me and Trixie who like doing kind of scary things together. It's about a couple with a penchant for black leather. It's a movie about a couple who, when they're feeling feisty, sometimes it likes to blindfold each other. That's right, for this next act, I will be blindfolding myself and throwing knives at my lovely bride. And this is how it's going to work. First, she's going to get on the board. She's going to get on the board. Get on the board. She's gonna spread her legs just a little bit. She's going to adopt a confident and cute pose. Close enough. Now, once I'm blindfolded, obviously, I will be on the seat. So the way I'm going to do this is first, I'm going to look at her. I'm going to memorize her position. Then I'm going to put the blindfold on, and I'm going to throw a knife. Right there. I'm going to throw a knife. Right there. And I'm going to throw a knife. Down there. At which point, I'll step forward and remove the blindfold to the side of Thunder's applause because you all did not. Just watch me murder my wife on stage. I hope. Now, as I said, this act is in honor of a movie. And in honor of that movie, I like to call it Fifty Shades Dizzier. <laughs>
you get harder to stop spitting every day. What? Oh, no, 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 I get it. No, I, I need to go back to the gym is what I'm saying. Trixie, Trixie! There's an important lesson here, ladies and gentlemen. Your wife can't make you sleep on the couch if you can't afford one. I'm busy dying when I was my drug, and this is the great guy's leaving over. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you've been a great audience. We do have one more act for you, but I want to mention that after this final act, our performers will come out in the crowd. If you'd like to meet or greet with any of them, please do so. We'll have souvenirs for sale over there. And if you'd like to get your picture taken with a snake wrapped around your neck, it'll happen over there in the jungle. But for now, make your way down over here to this end of the stage and put your hands together for Miss Spooky. Hey, you. Yes, Spooky is our cover girl because she was born different than you and your next door neighbors. To demonstrate her unusual anatomy, she's going to perform inside this torture cabinet. We call it the Braid Box. Everybody say, ooh. Not bad. We'll show you that the front of the box has 13 spots and slits. We'll open it up and show you the back has the same pattern. There's also viewing windows back there. We'll tell you more about that later. But for now, Spooky will step inside, showing you she fills the space from top to bottom and left to right. Using Diamond will close the door, lock her inside, and show you why we call it the Braid Box. He'll stick 13 solid steel blades through the cabinet while Miss Spooky is trapped inside. Now this is not a magic trick, okay? There's no velvet curtains here, there's no trap doors. She's in that coffin and those blades go all the way through. So how does she do it? How does she live? Well, that's why we call her the Rubber Girl. Because she can bend and twist her body like a human pretzel. Right now she's in constant motion, wrapping herself around each blade like a snake would wrap around its prey. And when all of the blades are in the cabinet with Miss Spooky, there will be no one space any larger than a paper plate. Now Spooky learned how to do this act from her mother, who learned it from her mother. Spooky is a third generation circus performer. This is their family's act, and they've performed it all around the world. I want you to look in the front of the box and ask yourself, if you were trapped inside and we put those blades in, could you back out of the way? I know that I couldn't. But apparently Miss Spooky has, so let's get her right there. This is where the act ends. We take out the blades, we open the door, we show you that she's still in one piece. And then, at the end of the show, people always come up to us and they say, you know, how'd she do that? What'd she look like in here? Spooky has agreed to reveal her secrets to you guys here today. Now, this is totally optional. It's not mandatory. But if you'd like to learn her secrets, there's three rules. The first rule is we got to do it quickly and in an orderly fashion. You'll have to line up over there. You'll see Dizzy Diamond, the man in the role of Sparkle Vest, and he will let you back there. You'll say hi to Spooky through the windows, and you'll exit by Captain Darren with the top hat on the other side. It's a one way street. The second rule is, if you go back there, do not stick your hands inside the cabinet and poke and prod at the girl. She's not that kind of a show. The third rule is, since this is her family's secret, her family's way of making a living for generations, and she's going to reveal the secret to you, she does ask for a small donation. Now you can give her any amount if you wish, but she asks that it's no less than just one dollar each. And for a dollar, you get to see her in the box with the blades and learn how the blade box works. So if anybody would like to learn 